this is Chi Talk. Today we're talking about how to um, how to deal with a difficult situation, something that's going in a rut, uh, a, a problem, an issues, an issue you have, and you uh, you'd like to uh, find a solution to it. That could be applied to uh, so many general different things, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, about water, <laughs> about water in traditional Chinese medicine and the psychological aspect of it. So it's gonna be interesting. And uh, because we had so much rain here, so I thought to kind of share with you some wisdom from traditional Chinese medicine and, uh, and uh, see if you can, uh, uh, if it resonate with you, if you can apply it to your life. Uh, so this is Chi Talk. Thank you so much for coming here. Th thank you for being here and tuning in and listening. And uh, this uh, uh, podcast, uh, this talk is going to be transmute, transcribed into a podcast called Awaken the Healer Within. And uh, my name is Eli Cohen. I'm a medical Qigong practitioner and energy healing coach. I've been teaching for over 10 years and working with people one on one, uh, uh, deal with all kinds of chronic health condition, finding sustainable solution through mind body practices and the wisdom of traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, not so much as an acupuncture, but as a, a mind-body practice. Uh, so, so here we are talking about, let's do a little ceremony before we start. I'm glad that we're now, uh, you can hear me well. I'm gonna have to check up that YouTube link, see what's going on with it. But uh, so far we are we are good. <laughs> so let's uh, let's do a little meditation that kind of like amplifies a little bit of what we're going to talk about today. So let's close our eyes and come into your body. As we come into the body, we feeling the feet touching on the floor. Our sits bones on a chair and relax your body down. So allow your body to give way to gravity. Allow your body to relax, release stress and tension from wherever the body you feel that you have stress and tension, maybe the shoulder, relaxing the stomach, Relaxing the chest and notice that with no effort on your part, the body is breathing. And tune into the breath in an area that you feel most compelling to focus on for just a minute. each breath at a time as you connect with your body, mind and breath. Let each breath harmonize your body and mind. As you are in your body, be aware of your surrounding with eyes closed. The surrounding around you, so in front of you, on the sides, also on the back, behind you. We usually tend to neglect the back, the back side of us. And just kind of like as a practice, see if you can get your attention outside of yourself, right five feet behind you and look at yourself from the back. Like if you were a person behind you, sitting behind you, notice if you can feel and you can see your your backside. What do you see from that view? Now lift yourself about five feet 
or maybe 10 feet above you into the ceiling and maybe beyond the ceiling and look down at you. Maybe go to back to your body, bring your attention back to the body and from the body, go about 10 feet underneath you. And look at you from there. Let's bring our attention back into the body. And slowly opening your eyes. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> so this is an interesting meditation. Uh, and uh, really what this meditation is implies kind of like the subject of our talk. You know, I just thought, let's start to talk about the energy of water in traditional Chinese medicine and and how and and more of like the psychological aspect of it and uh, and what we can we learn from it uh, in Chinese medicine and Qigong and martial arts. So many people were talking about uh, water and water uh, seemed to be uh, the the strongest element or the most powerful element from all the other elements you have you have the five element system in traditional Chinese medicine we have fire we have metal we have earth we have a uh, wood uh, and uh, and water we say that water conquers all so water is the strongest element and water washes out earth wash uh, uh, water can um, can find ways through rocks uh, and over time water would uh, disintegrate uh, iron metal it would turn in, in, in it will rust and, and crumble it into dust so water is a very strong element the forces of water is the strongest and uh, it's not and it, it actually even conquers fire it's stronger than fire and fire is a very strong element. If you think about it, it's fire in the heart, our, the fire in the sun. We say that water is stronger than fire. It puts down fire very easily. So uh, a lot of martial artists in, in, uh, based their form on, on water. Even Bruce Lee, one of his famous quote is like, be like water. He said, be like water. Because water you cannot grasp. You cannot... You cannot grasp your enemy if he's how can you hold on on water it's very liquid it's escaping from you yeah and water we say uh, in chinese medicine they say water is conquers by yielding not by force not by pushing but by yielding <laughs> so water is uh 70 of our body is water Water is very calming, it's very tranquil, but it's very also, it gets into everywhere <laughs> and it's, uh, and it goes deep. If water is quiet, we can see our reflection in, 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 in water. Where water is turbulent, it's really hard to navigate your ship in the ocean. But when the water is clear, you can watch, you can see yourself and you can see yeah, tranquility is where things arise from water. And when water is still, they can go deep. And so the, all these, uh, you know, so Taoist shamanic practices in China and Taoism really look at nature in order to reflect onto ourself, in order to learn from nature, how can we be better or how can we be one with nature because we are part of nature. So, uh, so how, what, what water teaches us on how to navigate through life or through difficulties is one of the, and, and 
and be like water, be the, the strongest force in nature. And water, just to mention in terms of yin and yang, is yin, is very yielding, it's very, uh, it's cold, it's deep, and it has time. Fire is very quick, yeah, and it's very uh, fast, and it's, uh, and it's shallow, but it acts very quickly. So it's very, very different, but it's, it's very powerful. And so how can we take that into, uh, into dealing with our own uh, difficulties or problems? Um, <clears throat> so uh, water is yin in Chinese medicine. It relates in, in your organ system to the kidneys and the bladder and, uh, and connects with longevity. So it connects with, uh, yeah, water is about being still. So from a psychological perspective, and there's that also in Chinese medicine, from a psychological, we don't call it psych, we call it mind state. But from a psychological perspective, it would be, um, it would be to cultivate uh, uh, inquisitiveness or uh, to be um, Uh, like a phil like phil uh, the philosopher like be a think or something that is very uh contemplative that's what i wanted to say being contemplative being curious so curiosity is really the energy of water and from curio from, from a place of curiosity come creativity so it's really the opposite of stress of fire it's actually the very yin. And there's people that are more water than fire. There's people that are very fiery. And uh, there are people that are very, very slow, a, 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 more like a thinker, a philosopher, and a contemplative, and uh, looking at things from different perspective. And this is really what the meditation was. And, and about perspective and how can we look at situation from different perspective. It's about patient. Yeah, so a lot of times we, we have something that we want in life or a task or, or, or a goal or something and we say, ah, you know, we, we don't get it. And we, we haven't gotten it. It's been so long and we are, we are feeling defeated. And water said to say to you, be patient, be patient and keep, keep at it and look at it from different perspective. Be curious about it. <laughs> be curious about this issue, about this problem. Look at it from different perspective and, uh, and be patient and the energy will come to you. So uh, when we have lack of patient, yeah, we tend to feel defeated or, um, or failed uh, when we want to, to to look at things just from one yeah I'm I have a um, um, a problems with with my partner or with a friend and I just see my point of view <laughs> and I'm sticking to my point of view because I'm angry why because that's fire right anger is fire and when you're in a state of stress which is what fire it's inflammation. Inflammation would keep you like a horse with a <laughs> just looking at one direction. And so, um, so, so water is completely different. Being water is the opposite of the stress response. And so we have to get ourselves first out of the stress response and to be curious and to see how does our friend see the situation or how it can be seen in a different way, just as an exercise, as a joyful exercise, maybe. So, uh, so this is what really water teaches us from more like a psychological perspective. <clears throat> and this is, uh, this is what everybody strives on. And in Qigong and Chinese medicine, uh, more like a theory, Taoist theory, we say that water always win 
what, we, uh, there's actually a sentence, the water wins the last battle. The water always win. Yin always win. We said also that women stronger than men because <laughs> they're more yin. <laughs> of course, there's women that are more young. <laughs> so you have to, you know, so it doesn't mean that <laughs> so, and there's men that are more yin that are actually embody and psychologically more yin uh, attitude. So uh, it doesn't mean, but we, in general, we say that the yin is stronger, is more powerful. It goes deeper. It has time. It, it doesn't hurry. Water doesn't hurry. It will eventually conquer. It would eventually uh, shave that rock away. It'll take time, but it'll do it. And so, um, so this is kind of like uh, a little an, an anecdotal uh, thought and story about uh, this form. And in our practice, in Qigong practice, we are mimicking water, especially in this season that, season that is coming. Uh, there's a lot of water way that we move, the way we breathe, uh, that, that mimics water that are very good for the internal organs, the joints and the bones. And that's the deepest part of the body. So water goes into the depth. And when the water comes, it goes deeper. So um, by moving like water, yeah, by moving like water, we are, uh, we are training our mind to be like water. So if you practice Qigong or, or a form of uh, movement meditation that is very calm, consistently over time you would feel that you think differently that you look at tough situation differently you know and life circumstances differently <laughs> you know when the when the pandemic started when all kinds of like a lot of things that come into my life now nowadays i ask i'm being paid I'm, I'm being patient like let's see how this can turn into a blessing. So patient is very important. Aiming is very important. What is your intention? But uh, uh, yeah, we can learn a lot of things from, from water and from uh, being more patient for uh, actually uh, yielding. Yeah, a lot of times in martial art, uh, um, somebody uh, uh, bring a punch to us and instead of like resist it, we actually yield to it and move it it's just like a dance so um so by by doing this by practicing this with your body by practicing qigong by practicing a soft type of martial art for instance this can really train your mind to uh to also you know if something comes into your life how do you what do you do you act with resistant with force do you invite it and so the main the main um the, the main energy, if I could summarize it in one, is, in one word, would be curiosity. Curiosity. And curiosity uh, lead to new experience. Curiosity leads to new experience. Curiosity leads to uh, a new perspective. And curiosity needs, leads to solving uh, eventually a, a, an issue. And, and curiosity is the opposite of judgment. What is the opposite from is from judgment. And there's, and that's really big in a, in a whole uh, Western uh, kind of psychological uh, method called nonviolent communication. I don't know if some of you heard about it. Nonviolent communication is like, how can we shift judgment into curiosity? You know, a lot of time we're, we are in a fight with somebody and we're judging we're judging even before we even talk with the person are we judging all kinds of things that we see we're judging this pandemic is bad for us <laughs> we already determined it <laughs> well so how can we be curious and really that's really the message from from water you know, how can we develop curiosity 
uh, towards everything. And by, uh, by judging or predetermined, things are more boring. People that say I'm bored in life, that that means that uh or it's boring, you know a lot of people are getting bored now you know the bored boredom boredom come from being judged too uh, judgy <laughs> not being curious because really you can take a leaf of a tree and look at it for three hours <laughs> if you're curious there's so many questions you can ask so how can we develop the uh, the energy of curiosity inside of us uh, towards the world, towards life circumstances, towards situations, and uh, and get new perspective uh, and get new perspective from your <laughs> from your research. And of course, when we are in a stress response, it's really hard because we are in a fire state, and the mind is just really going in one direction. And we first have to kind of do our practices to let go of that and then to be kind of curious about it, you know? So this is what I have to say. I hope that was inspiring. <laughs> We're gonna continue to talk about water in different con situation and different application, but this is uh, kind of like the first talk since it's rained so much. And I'm not a person that loves, loves the rain because I, I love to be outdoors. So whenever it rains, I'm indoors. <laughs> but I thought, hey, let's talk about water a little bit. So let me open the conversation to you guys and see what you can add, ask or say anything about it. Uh, whatever you guys have in mind, uh, questions are welcome. Uh, any other comments are welcome. Yes, Gail, go ahead. Okay, this is really fascinating that you're speaking to not only the elements, but the temperaments, because each of us has a, what I want to call um, a specific temperament. And to know our temperament is to be able to have command or dominion over our temperament. Now, in speaking about water, yes, it's fluid, but it's also joyful. And it brings up gratitude. And gratitude is what I would call a generating energy. Because when you are in a space of not only curiosity, as you so beautifully brought to our attention, but when you're in a state of gratitude, to be grateful for the rain, to be grateful for the time of being self-reflective, perhaps. This is something that is a generating energy and it generates a positive or magnetizes a positive reality response to us. And I can go on, but I'm not going to because <laughs> it's broken enough. So I thank you for bringing up the Thanks. elements. Yeah, thank you so much. And it's it's really interesting that you're talking about gratitude. Uh, this energy kind of like we see it as belong to the heart and there's a very strong connection between water and fire uh, and a lot of balance between water and fire. And specifically nowadays, when the, wa when, when the uh, energy of water is more predominant, when, when there's more, uh, uh, there's winter and it's cold, uh, we say to connect with the energies of gratitude, of love, of, of joy. And if you, and we do it also already in our culture, right? Uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, people singing song, getting together, holidays, it's all in the, in the cold season. There's reason for that because really this is the time to kind of uh, move and activate the heart energy when it's, when it's cold, when there's, uh, when kind of like the water is, overflowing the, the 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 kind of like the northern hemisphere it's it's more predominant thank you gail for this thank you thank you for uh, sharing this <laughs> hey carla yes go ahead yeah thank you um my cat really liked the talk today and i was thinking about how cats are very curious <laughs> and they <laughs> you know what i mean very mobile like water Mm -hmm. But um, I also have felt like when it rains, I don't go out a lot. 
And then as you were speaking, I thought, perhaps I should be curious about going more for a walk when it's raining, you know, because I like to go out every day, but if it's pouring, I don't go. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it would be a new thing to just get all my gear on and just go out in the pouring rain and experience it. So thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. You know, for that, I have to say, I have a, my neighbor is from Ireland. Is He also has this accent and he goes out in the rain when, whenever he always out, but he just dresses, he dresses good enough. He has the clothes to be protected and he just, he goes in the rain and he always goes on his walk. Uh, I guess it rains a lot in Ireland. So it's, <laughs> So he knows how to dress up. <laughs> yes, Thank Claudia. I love, I love to do talk. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, I just, Claudia. I just want to briefly say water is also cleansing. And nice. um, by the way, walking in the rain is really fun. I really <laughs> recommend it. If you're shy away from that put on the gear or whatever and go out there it's really and it's also very um energizing quite frankly you mm -hmm. know to be you're walking and you're getting cleansed and the air is fresh and you're there's the smell of nature is really special when it's raining also so everything comes away from it. yeah really thank fun. you thanks that's good edward go ahead everybody talk yeah i mean uh, every, you, the, the girls are all saying it right now <laughs> uh, I love walking in the rain. Do you ever stop and smell the air after the rain washes it? Uh, you know, we go up to Bon Tempe and walking in the trees after a rain. It's unbelievable. It's amazing being out by the, the water. It, it's amazing. So in the context, when you started with the meditation, it got very curious to me and very powerful because looking at myself from my back, from my front, from the top, from bottom up, I felt like it was a, a very powerful space to heal me that all of a sudden outside of me was bigger than me. Mm -hmm. And I felt as if I could deal within me from the outside. Mm -hmm. And I just got that strong feeling, but it's funny how before the word curious came up, I was getting really curious about, I have a whole new way of healing. What do I know? Oh yeah, so. you, you got it right, Edward, because uh, this is a, a, a powerful part of a, a meditation of, um, of a, a self-heal meditation. So I, um, you know it's it's very it's very helpful to step out of where we are and we usually go uh we usually our attention is usually like forward like this this is why people head is a little bit also forward right <laughs> so um so this is very healing to uh, uh what we did it's 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 a part of a healing um uh, qigong meditation thank you i'm i'm glad that you felt uh, that you felt it <laughs> thank you <laughs> all right guys yeah bart go ahead everybody's on today good <laughs> hello everybody um so i have a question about the water and the kidneys so water is connected to the kidneys and the winter season <laughs> and our kidneys they need strength and warmth to function and energy so but i associate the water with cold, cold, coldness or low temperature. So that is the opposite of what we want to achieve. So is the when I associate the water with coldness, so isn't that adding to the low temperature in the winter? Oh, that's you know what I mean? Yeah, I think I think I understand the question. So, um, so that's uh, that's that's good. So it's and and it's it's true. So the water in the kidney needs to be warm. In and and here we're talking about more qigong and really internal alchemy is what uh, you're mentioning more of uh, actually practice, and we we really want to warm up in the winter to have why because alchemy chi flows through movement and water 
can be water it has a, the water tendency is to be cold exactly what you said water is cold this is why it's yin and no matter if if you're in the tropics at some point and the depth of the ocean it's going to be cold and uh and in order to to move the chi you have to have fire so that's why there's a very strong connection between the heart and the kidney so so the fire is is the gratitude is love is joy is uh all these elements and when we warm up the kidneys actually in practice we do it with our hands the hands are an extension of the heart we warm up our hands so the the chi is really the steam so if you put if you cook water under fire what comes out comes out steam that's chi that's the energy so water can be stagnant and that's no good <laughs> And so the water in the kidney or in your life can be stagnant. So people that runs cold all the time or staying in all the time, they're very yin. Yeah, people that are more yin, are can the chi can get really stagnant. And so you, and that's the problem of also uh, archetype people that are more yin type of people, like more kidney. Because in Chinese medicine, we also uh, can analyze people through the five elements. And there's people that are more heart, more fire people. Yeah, people that likes to go bungee jumping and, do, you know, they're very fiery. They're looking for an exhilaration. <laughs> and that's really uh, a thrill seek seeker. That's more heart, heart, extreme heart or extreme sport. And on the other side, you have the people that are more yin, that are, can can just sit and meditate all day, no problem. <laughs> and they prefer to read books all day. And so these people get can have stagnant chi. So water can water has a temperature cool. So the so really it's important to be more connected to the heart in the winter like what Gail started to mention gratitude and to walking, to be active uh, also, and to, to have this kind of, uh, and then the, and then the cheese moving because you have, uh, so it really that goes into our conversation that we talked about how to live your life in a balance between yin and yang <laughs> and not to be too, you know, sitting on the couch all day with, you would feel stagnant, but also working too hard and be stressful all day, you'll also feel burnout. So how do we find the balance? I hope that answer is what you're talking about a little bit. Yes, so we have to move for the chi to move, and we have to connect the heart to the kidneys so that the water can become warmer. Is that Yes, right? exactly, exactly. Exactly. It's like uh, after you sleep, a very good deep sleep, that's really nourishing kidney chi, being still, being reading a book, but also being active, being uh, uh, connecting with energy of gratitude, of joy, dance or movement, uh, connecting with your loved ones. Yeah. Yes, Edward. So very quickly, what I got out of this, thank you, Bart, Gail, everybody, thank you, and thank you, Ellie, is, so the Chinese is the reason that they have a lot of tea and tea for healing <laughs> is for the warmth to warm up your kidneys. Yeah, ooh, beautiful. Here we are getting everything together. So uh, that's, thank you, thank you, Edward. So yes, so the one, we cannot drink cold water because that that kills the fire <laughs> and the fire the fire sits uh so it's that's that's a whole workshop you guys but let me tell you so the fire sits underneath the navel inside of you just an inch underneath the navel inside of the body and that's the fire <laughs> and then the fire is the is is connected to the digestive fire so the digestive fire, when you're, when you're too much, when you cold, you also don't, uh, your digestive fire is, it's not good enough. You, you cannot eat, then you have problems eating some foods and then all these food allergies. <laughs> so this is uh, also connect with the kidney and with the digestive fire and this fire. And so the Chinese, they always, if you go to a restaurant, 
they always bring you a hot water, <laughs> warm water, because they don't want to kill the digestive fire. And the digestive fire is, is connected to the kidney because it's in the same location. The digestion and the kidney are in the same location. So this is in the back, this is in the front, but it's the same area. So uh, to keep the kidney warm and active, to keep digestive warm, uh, you always uh, you always drink uh, in, uh, if you go to a traditional Chinese restaurant, not in America, but <laughs> in America, you get ice water. But if you go to China, you get actually warm water. I was uh, constantly being offered and warm water during the meal. So you don't kill the, the, the fire. And... Uh, Thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ellie, one other thing. Th this is incredible because what I realized last year, we had two months, we did a, a, a program with you. And I also, by the way, challenged you for the new seminar on this. <laughs> <laughs> Can I sign up today? Because you started me on having 16 ounces of water. But what I do is I put it out at night and it goes upstairs with me. And before I get down i have 16 ounces then i juice and it's not cold and then i go ahead and i have my hot cup of coffee mm -hmm. then i walk three to six miles a day i leave the house by nine and i you know because last year we were locked down couldn't get out couldn't, but i i got into this habit and thanks to you and you had us walk and be curious of the leaves and be it was right. a great great course but now I realize you had me at a point of drinking more, doing room temperature water, 16 mm -hmm. ounces before I came down. And then I went through juicing my vegetables and fruits and then have a hot cup of coffee. <laughs> Beautiful. You know, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Edward. Yeah, that's great. We had this amazing, amazing program last time. It was really fun. And and we uh, kind of connected with each organ and, and the energy and how do we uh, uh, kind of implement into our life. We should do this program again. It's, it was really fun. I challenge you to it right now. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Start the new year resolution quick. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, yes, Gail. Oh, I cannot. You're on mute. I think this is just a jewel with what everybody, it, it sparked the curiosity in everyone. And if each talk could be connected to the elements, uh, whether it be the fire, the earth, the air, and the wood, as you say, um, and connect that to the organs, that would be so informational and delightful, Ellie. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so we, we try to, um, when, when I'm doing, I'm doing it uh, not together, but per the season. So it's like, whenever we get to that season, we talk about the the elements. So like what we talked about metal, we actually, we can talk about metal more from the psychological point. I don't think we've done that. So thank you, Gail, I'll, I'll do it. I'll add it on. <laughs> thank you, everybody. That was really, that was really uh, very, um, invigorating and uh participatory so i really appreciate it your your participation uh i think everybody talked <laughs> today marty didn't talk but it's okay yeah you were here a lot and you you you, you always have something smart to say so i'm, I'm <laughs> I did a lot of listening it, it was great <laughs> <laughs> thanks it was great thank you guys so much for joining me let's uh Let's uh, let's close with uh, with the meditation, a short meditation. Let's uh, just kind of relax back into our body. Allow yourself to close your eyes, if you will, and just feel feel your body. And if your hands feel warm then put them on the heart center. If they're not, maybe you rub them against each other to kind of heat them up a little bit. And that energy that you heat up between your hands are heart chi. And let's put them on the heart. It's the element of fire.
and connect to the energy of gratitude. What is it? What can, what can you think about to trigger the energy of gratitude? What can you bring to mind? What can you bring the mind to get the energy of joy going? Maybe a little smile on your face, remembering something joyful. An energy of love. And abundance. And let's take these beautiful hands and put them on the lower back and feel the heat on the lower back from the hands. And you can rub the kidney up and down. And feel the heat on the lower back, on your kidneys. Nice, and let's bring the hands into the lower abdomen, put them both on the navel. Doing a little Qigong, sitting Qigong practice. And as you sit here with your mind in this area in the navel, think about what did you take from this talk? What was one thing that you can take from the talk into your, your life or into a situation that you're dealing with? let's open the hands and open the eyes beautiful thank you guys so much well welcome and thank you and i'll see you next time or in class have a great uh great time and great holiday for all of us bye now